Hey everybody, Patrick Connor here on Knuckles and Gloves Boxing Radio, and I am here with Jomi Escoboza, John Michael Escoboza, the new cruiserweight champion of the BYB Extreme Bare Knuckle Organization. Man, you know, first of all, whew, congratulations. Look at that. First thank of all, you, congratulations. Thank Second, thank you for being here. And third, I'm sorry to start out with like a mundane question, but how does it feel to be the new cruiserweight champion of BYB Extreme? Uh, I mean, it feels great, you know. Um, I have worked hard for this my whole life, and uh, it's only, you know, only going up from here. And, you know, we're going to face stronger, bigger opponents, bigger names. We want, you know, the big money fights. I want everybody, I want all the smoke. I want to be known as the most annoying Southpaw in combat sports history. So, you know, we, we're only going up here, up from here, but, you know, it feels good. It feels good to see my fruits from my training. Already, your your face looks pretty good. You were a little worried about catching a, a little bit of a cut there. You look pretty yeah, good. Yeah, because that was a rare moment in time. Like, right here, I got a little cut. Like, it's healed up really nice, but it'll go away. Like, you know, like, you never, like it's never been there. But yeah, the, my main thing is, is to try to be like Mayweather and Bare Knuckle, man. Hit, don't get hit, because you don't want to be in there looking like you just got hit with a blender, you know? Well, I mean, that's that's not really the kind of thing a lot of people might expect to hear from one of the bare knuckle guys. But for anybody who didn't tune in the other day, you defeated Rene Rodriguez uh, the weekend before last. So can you give a little bit of a backstory? Like, for instance, what led you to martial arts or boxing in general? And like, what kind of martial arts experience do you have? So ever since I was four years old, like I was always Ninja Turtles and always you know, anime and, uh, and like, cartoons and all that stuff. So I've always wanted to be a ninja since I was little. I always wanted to fight. My parents never liked that. They're Caribbean for the Dominican Republic. They're more like school. So um, they always hated that. Thought it wasn't, there was no future. Uh, I, I did sports and, and um, you know, all the way up to high school. Went to college for one semester. And... Um, it like for college football and it, up in it's a division three college small college and um i always knew you know like fighting was like I, after football i was gonna go straight into fighting but even before i started the the whole semester we saw the fight where anderson silva fought forrest griffin you know the little boom 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 and as soon as I see that play, it was just that that for sure sign that I was just like yeah i don't care what anybody says and everything i'm gonna just take this you know, semester off as a vacation out here in Virginia. And then when I come back home, I'm going to start training to, to fight and start fighting amateurs for a bunch of years and then I'll um, turn pro MMA. And then um, now I do everything. I've always tried to focus on more MMA to get, get into the UFC, but now I do everything from bare knuckle and, you know, boxing, kickboxing. I'll do everything. So uh, how what does uh, what does your background in being Dominican is does that is that a big part of your life? And uh, so it's more there's there's not too much martial arts I would say in like aspect like the, uh, it's not too popular out there in Dominican Republic so it was more like with sports and baseball influence but I mean I like sports. Yohan Guzman. You got, a, you got a couple more, but yeah, yeah, but but I mean, like, um, it was more, you know, focused on like uh, sport, like not combat sports. There's no combat sports are never really popular in Dominican Republic. But it, I mean, it's something that I've always wanted to do. I've always had that warrior spirit inside of me. I've always wanted to fight, do like a bunch of action stuff. So, I mean, um, I, I when I started after football, I started training kung fu for about a year and a half, and then I stopped training and slacked off for like two years and then started training uh, seriously. And that's when I started, you know, I took my first amateur fight without knowing any wrestling or any jujitsu or anything. All I knew was like, a, you know, some, some Kung Fu striking, but I was out of shape because, you know, um, I, 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 I slacked off for like two years and then I took the fight. And the dude was a blue belt in jiu-jitsu and just took me down. And I defended all the submissions, but he just took me down for three rounds and held me down. But I was out striking him um, throughout the, the round and I lost the fight. But I was never nervous. That's one thing that I really liked uh, about fighting. 
is that I was never nervous, even in my first fight or in any of my fights ever as an amateur or any, even street fights. I've been in like do or die situations and street fights and like, I'd never been nervous. So I've always knew that fighting, if um, fighting was the thing, you know, was my career choice. Like the, the, the best place where my skills, so I could, uh, you know, show my skills. And that's one thing that I would have over fighters is always, is that I know I'm never going to be nervous. Nothing's ever going to affect me mentally. Does that kind of extend to other parts of your life? Like, are you, are you the kind of person that doesn't panic in emergency situations? Yeah. I mean, I, I'm, I'm very good at, I'm very good at, um, at like focusing and uh, focusing in on like do or die um, situations, like very strict, being able to stay strong minded and, and like do or die situations. So you, uh, I heard, heard about your background in kind of backyard boxing. Is that what led directly to the bare knuckle? Well, I mean, um, I was doing Kung Fu before the, before I started jumping into the backyard. Cause, um, it was one of my teammates, uh, uh Jermaine Redman Barnes. He, he was doing, uh, some of the backyard fights first and he had, he had, uh, you know, recruited me in there and I started, you know, jumping in there and I just kept doing it and it led to this. So it's, uh. So, I mean, yeah, like I started off like with Kung Fu, but I did um, backyard boxing. You know, I did a, the Dada's backyard fights and stuff like that with, with a little bit of Kung Fu, of Kung Fu knowledge that I had. I, I didn't even know any boxing. It was just more of like basic like Kung Fu strikes. So what's the, uh, or is there a big technique difference when it comes to punching with the kind of like partial wraps of the bare knuckle or the complete bare knuckle versus MMA gloves, boxing gloves is, do you feel like there's a real big technique difference? Um, yes, of course, because, um, of course, uh, because of the weight difference, your hands are way a, a lot much lighter. Um, also like, I would say the wrist support is the same. The only difference is the knuckles is the, you know, the co the coverage on the knuckles bare knuckle. Of course, there's nothing. And when you land, when you land hard and you throw hard, you're going to feel that shit. When it's, when it's with uh, regular gloves, I mean, you know, you're not going to really feel it unless you hit someone's forehead or like a, some, like an elbow or something really hard. So, um, yeah, there's a huge difference in technique because the power, I mean, speed, <laughs> yeah, you can use a lot more speed, but power is, the technique is a lot different for sure, for sure. Well, not to get too like technical or too heavy on the technique questions, but in terms of footwork, is there a big difference as far as how do you need, how you need to move your feet, especially with your style, when you're talking about uh, being an annoying southpaw, and you've also spoken about like you don't want to get hit, like that's the name of the game. You're not trying to get in there and just get your head smacked around. So, is there do you feel like there's a big difference in how you have to use your feet and footwork? Yes, yes, for sure. So. With, es without, especially in the trigon too yeah yeah especially in the trigon so just the trigon as aspect you know it's like a half of of a pro boxing ring probably maybe yeah like if you cut a diagonal like a, you know you cut it in a diagonal and then um the i believe the corners are even in the in the trigon ring so the way the corners are set up is that if you get backed up into it you can't circle out like in a normal boxing ring. So it's kind of like, like you, you bounce off the rope, so you literally have to push your way out. So I like to call the corners the death corner. So you get caught in the death in the, in the <laughs> corner, you feel me, you, you might see death. And then um and then the other aspect with the gloves and the full work distance, also you know, boxing gloves, one or two inches of the gloves, it kind of you know. It kind of messes with the footwork also. So you have to be, you know, uh, like you have to step in more. You have to step out more, you know, just to, to not get hit. And Like the hit. padding on the gloves adds yeah, inches exactly. to your hand. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like the padding on the gloves because it could be just two inches, you know, and you miss or you hit. So, yeah, when that's. You mentioned after the fight, you said, as long as you don't take too much brain damage, you're good. So I, I know you probably said it as, you know, at least 
in, in part like a throwaway line after the fight. But I'm curious if you feel like there's a big distinction between the punishment that you have to take in the in uh, BYB Extreme, <laughs> in BYB Extreme, and then in MMA or or boxing, you know, because of the lack of padding and stuff like that, and also because if you get hit, it it feels like it, or I'm sorry, it looks like I've never been in there, <laughs> but it, it looks like you you take two three punches and that's really all it all it needs to do serious damage to your face yeah so um the tricky thing about bare knuckle is that it's actually safer than with gloves because you can't punch as hard as you can with gloves now you can but you at the same time you know it's bare knuckle and you can get cut a lot easier bone to bone and you can mess up your hands punching the wrong part of the head also. So it's like a give and take, you know, but at the same time, like as far as brain damage wise, it is safer than with gloves because the punches to the head are a lot softer. So, um, so yeah, it's like, it's, it's safer in that sense of the brain damage, but in damage of appearance on the outside, you know, you could get, you know, fucked up. <laughs> totally. No, I'm, I'm with you. And there's actually a discussion, an ongoing discussion in boxing as to uh, whether or not how much padding on the gloves and like headgear and stuff like that, whether or not that actually allows you to take more damage, which means you're going to absorb more brain damage or more blows to the head, which is bad, you know? So you said after the fight, after defeating Rene Rodriguez, you said that you, you felt like you could go another seven rounds. So what is it you're doing in the gym endurance wise to, to give you that kind of stamina? What, what the hell are you doing? You know, just taking a little bit off of, uh, off of the boxing goats, uh, uh, training, um, you know, like he, like the, the whole Mayweather dog, dog pound or, or dog fight, whatever he likes to call it, where, where they do unlimited rounds or they turn off the clock and stuff like that, just stuff like that, just, like, pushing my limits and sparring and, um, and training and just having, you know, a strong team. So always pushing me and always training with with different different athletes from all over the world. So I'm always having different styles come at me, trying to knock me out so I can be ready for anything that comes my way. And so, yeah, it's just the, the right preparation. Well, can you talk a little bit about your your team and your trainers? Because you mentioned them after the fight, too. And you're a champion now, of course. So those kinds of things automatically become a little bit more important. You know, who you're working with and who you're working out with. Yes, yes, for sure. Um, so the, my main team, uh, Team KO Committee, ran, um, ran by our, our the, you know, our head coach, Rob. You know, he's, he's like a big brother for us man he's he's been he's been around the game for a long time and just and what city is like, that in is here in Broward Broward Florida okay yeah we bounce around different gyms we go around different gyms and train and stuff like that and so that's like the, that's like my the, the main core team that I train with that I've been around that I've been with since since like the, uh, since way back since the beginning and um I also train at um at Sanford MMA which is one of the, if not the best uh, MMA gym in the world that has champions and uh, some of the best, best fighters in, in all different weight classes. So it's like going in there, you're, you're being, a, you're, you're getting attacked in all different angles by different styles and, you know, it's in different, in different disciplines. So it's just like, you're ready for anything. It prepares you to be ready for anything. You, you won't be you won't be faced by anything that you that you fight. Anything that gets in front of you, you'll be ready for it. So it just feels amazing to have two strong foundations in my training and, and have consistent consistent training because that's also key too. Because if you're not consistent with your training, then the timing will be off and everything will show in the cage or in the ring. It almost seems to me like with all the stuff that you're doing, um, and I'm also curious what you do like as a day job, but it seems to me like all of the stuff that you're doing, uh, it's like there, it seems like there's a larger goal, you know, cause you're participating in bare knuckle. You're, you said you're down for MMA, you're down for boxing. You're pretty much down for whatever. And you're especially down for training, whatever it's, it's almost, it almost feels like you have like some bigger goal in mind. 
Yeah, for sure. I mean, I'm just trying to make the most money possible in combat sports. And I'll try to be known for the most, to be the most annoying softball in combat sports. You know, have the most, try to try to create the most destruction as possible and be known to have some of the most brutal destruction in combat sports. And, you know, just put on a big show for the fans and be known for, for savagery. You know? So I, I only have a couple more questions and I'll let you eat your food. But um, oh, you, you can go ahead, you can go ahead. Well, it sounded like you had a, a lot of respect for Rene Rodriguez. So was that like a personal thing between you and him, the respect? Or was that, is that just kind of like you respect your opponents in general? You're not really much of a trash talker? Or does it kind of depend on how your opponent's coming at you? I mean, like, like with, with all my opponents, uh, no matter whether I respect them or not, once they sign the, the dotted line, I see it as they're an assassin. And they just signed a contract to kill me. So I have to kill them before they kill me. So, but at the same time, like me and him, we've been cool since, since way back. He's been fighting in the backyard longer than me. And, um, and yeah, so like, we've always had respect for each other. So we knew like going into the tournament that we probably go, we'll probably face each other in the finals. But, um, but yeah, but, like we just had respect. And, um, and if any, any other, opponent ever talk shit like the, the one before this one in the semifinals Luis Melo I mean he was talking shit to me for a whole year and for me nothing can phase me so for me I just laugh at everything so everything they were saying like he was saying like wild disrespectful stuff he had people from Brazil threatening me in the in the jails and shit messaging me on IG he had his uh his son messaging me talking shit so I had fun with it you know I, I was just you know having fun for a whole year and then for me, I don't know what he did with it, but I took that as motivation and that just helped me train harder. And I was just like, oh man, I'm just going to make this guy look completely different. I'm going to send him back to Brazil looking different. And then uh, that's what I did. <laughs> so, did you know before this, not this past weekend, but when you faced Rodriguez, did you know that the BYB Extreme event was going to be going up against uh, Belfort versus Evander Holyfield? Um... No, I didn't know until like, until until the Wayans, because I remember seeing the Wayans. I was like, "Oh shit, it's the same night." And then I remember um seeing the highlights of Silva knocking out Tito Ortiz. I was like, "Oh shit!" <laughs> I was like, "Yo, he finessed the shit out of that." He just woo 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 woo. <laughs> yeah, that it, that at least uh, whether or not you like Tito Ortiz, at least aesthetically, the knockout kind of made it made the show worthwhile kind of salvaged it a little bit but you know did you said you said you knew only about a day ahead of time what is I you probably don't really have that much feeling about it one way or another because you got to go into fight whether you're going up against Holyfield or whatever but I mean you know what did you think about that about which fight exactly well about just going up against it like you know uh did you feel like there was it almost like it kind of adds to your moment a little bit that you're kind of like dang I'm, I'm fighting on the same night as a guy like Holyfield even though we know he's older, but yeah. nonetheless, you know, like that you're, you're kind of center stage. Yeah. I mean, it, I don't know. I, I kind of really didn't even think about it, to be honest. So um, I just, I'm just in there trying to, trying to put it on, put on a bigger show than their show. That's what I was trying to do. Yeah. Well, the, 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 the most I thought about it was, was like, all right. So if it's on the same show as mine, I have to put on a, you know, a better performance or something, you know, that's the best, right. you know, just try to outdo them. Well, you know, the, the bare knuckle, uh, obviously in the last few years, it's, it's kind of being raised in the consciousness of combat sports fans. And I think especially boxing fans, I don't know whether or not uh, mixed martial arts fans are really catching on. Cause I, I can't really say, but I know that in the boxing community, a lot of people are taking notice. Uh, and I mean, I, I feel like I would be letting bare knuckle fans down if I didn't ask this and I don't want you to get in trouble or anything like that. But uh, it seems like BYB extreme more or less stands alongside BKFC in the kind of bare knuckle world, at least in the minds of a lot of bare knuckle fans or whatever. Right. So do you feel like you might, you might not be authorized to make a business decision or anything, but do you feel like there could be some kind of cross promotional fight in the future or some way to consolidate the bare knuckle title? Oh no, for sure, for sure. 
like um that's it's in the works it's actually definitely in the works we're definitely gonna put on um put on a show a show where a bunch of our champions are gonna go up against their champions you know and then um what i really want to do is make sure that it's in the trigon because it's a smaller ring and also three minutes they fight two minutes i guarantee you you put those motherfuckers in a three minutes in the trigon it's gonna be different it's gonna be a different result it's gonna be a lot different for a lot of them and uh it's gonna be a fun show I, I you, that. and i'm just you, waiting to find out who is their 185 champ who is their 185 champ because uh you're getting all the smoke <laughs> it's well it sounds like you know between hector lombard and then i think lorenzo hunt are the ones that are about to to throw down or it sounds like it's about to go down between them so it sounds like whoever the winner is bring them on for you right hey man i wh whoever is the 185 champ for any bare knuckle thing they're they're in line for uh how do you call it they're in line for for the for the, the what is it called the police the police gazette belt that's that's yeah. the belt that i want and they told me there has to be a worthy opponent. So I'm just finding the worthy opponent because I'm going to establish myself as the 185 GOAT in bare knuckle boxing. And it's, it's going to be annoying, annoying fighting. And you're going to see a lot of people's faces look. You're going to see a lot of before and after pictures. It's going to be a lot of before and after pictures because the jab of death is going to be known in bare knuckle. I promise you that. <laughs> Jomi, the jab of death, Escoboza. I mean, that's that's a pretty decent that's a pretty decent nickname, you know. Uh, that's just that's just you know uh, a name of one of the many tools in my arsenal. But uh, that's that's what sets up everything. It's just the jab of death, and that's what makes people's face look different. Because the thing is, hit and don't get hit. The second thing is jab you till your face looks different, and then the third thing is whatever comes, whatever you give me, whatever you whatever you open up well i'm i'm looking forward to seeing whatever you got in your arsenal i know a lot of bare knuckle fans are as well do you have any uh before we get out of here do you have any parting words for hector lombard lorenzo hunt any of these any of these guys at the 185 pound at the cruiserweight division in bare knuckle hey i'm just i'm just gotta say man is 185 I need a worthy opponent and I want the police cassette belt. I want the the belt that matters. That's the belt that matters. So nobody can say shit. And and everybody's gonna get the smoke at 185. I'm gonna establish myself as the 185 GOAT in bare knuckle boxing. You will know Joe me the Archangel and the Jab of Death as Go status in bare knuckle boxing. I promise you that. Well, Jomi, I, I really appreciate you taking the time to talk with us. And uh, look, I, I really appreciate you, especially after a day of work. I uh, really look forward to seeing you get back into the Trigon. Man, appreciate it. Appreciate it, man. Um, I'm getting ready, man. I'm healing up. My hands are, are back to normal. There's no fractures. And you guys are going to see uh, even more condition, even stronger, faster jab. Like the jab is just evolving. It's, it's just, it's, it's not mastered. I haven't even mastered the jab yet. So like, I haven't even mastered it yet and you see what it does. So it's, it's, it's coming like lightning and it's gonna strike really, really hard. We gotta see that belt again before we go. Oh, for sure, for sure, man. <laughs> BYB Extreme Cruiserweight Champion, Jomi Escoboza. Appreciate you again, man. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, man. Appreciate it.